Greetings, YouTube. Last month, Ronnie and I were having a discussion about post-apocalyptic settings. I thought I'd wear my helmet. These things are amazingly unwieldy. They really are. Glad I don't have to wear one all the time. Um, and he likes a really grim and gritty post-apocalyptic world. A post-apocalyptic world that is married deeply to the concepts of horror. Whereas I prefer a post-apocalyptic setting that is married to the concepts of rebirth with a little bit of fant space or science fantasy thrown in. And we came to the conclusion that the reason that each of us had this particular attraction to those versions of post-apocalyptic, and post-apocalyptic things can be full spectrum, it's a genre, it isn't just one thing, um, is because of our personal history with that genre. And for Ronnie, his introduction to it was Mad Max, um, the original. And, and then, of course, um, Road Warrior. So he has that model in mind. And that, and that isn't I even as close as deeply grim and gritty as some post-apocalyptic films have touched um, a fiction or, or, or role-playing games. Um, for example, in Darwin's World, at least the last version I looked at, there were, you actually had to, it was D20, that one version was, you had to have a, buy a feat to be fertile. So yeah, it was kind of grim and gritty. I mean, you, for your character to actually be able to procreate, you had to have purchased a feat. So that means the number of people that are going to be fertile in the world is going to be really small. You're looking at a genetic bottleneck on a massive scale. Um, whereas my background in it came from Andrea Norton and Thunder the Barbarian. A literal cartoon. Saturday morning cartoon. So that's really how I got into it. The idea that it was science fantasy more than science fiction. Um, Starman's son was still science fiction. Starman's son was science fiction. It wasn't only star fantasy. It was fantasy. But Thundar was definitely star science fantasy. And the first role-playing game, complete role-playing game that I ever purchased was the first edition of uh, Metamorphosis Alpha and then Gamma World. So the ideas of these weird, wacky mutants with these freaky abilities, as opposed to mutations that are far more realistic, like Darwin's world, like I mentioned earlier, where mutations are far more likely to be somewhat very realistic. Not just somewhat, very realistic. So mutations are bad things. You get some positives, but there's a lot of negatives. Whereas in Gamma World, um, my favorite version being the 1992 edition, it's very much Marvel comic book characters. And that's also where my inspiration for post-apocalyptic settings coming from, because I was a big Marvel fan. I was, a, I think, I was more of a Marvel fan when I was younger than I was a DC fan. Now I'm, I'm on the fence on that. I don't really comics much anymore, but I'm less enamored of the Marvel universe in some ways. But they had mutants, and the mutants in the Marvel universe were almost always positive. They eventually addressed that with the Morlock, which I thought was really good. They finally address the fact that not everyone wins in the mutation um, lottery, and so they address that, and that was cool. Even but even the Morlocks weren't as bad off as real world mutations go. In real world, mutations are often horrible. Um, uh, nature can be cruel. This thing echoes. Uh, and so I think those backgrounds of ours really impact which genres we like in role-playing games and which we find attractive. And like I said, my favorite post apocalyptic game is still the 1992 edition of Gamma World. I think it's the perfect mix for me of a 18th century technical base, it's got some very loose class structure, it's got mutant animals, mutant humans, mutant plants. The plants were beautifully done. The mutant animals were beautifully done. The structure, enough structure there for everything I need to do. And it was open and simple enough that I could easily add in mutant animals that didn't exist if someone wanted to play one. Um, so that was very simple. I liked the idea that if an animal looked like an animal, didn't have any mutations that were really vastly, I mean, it wasn't humanoid, that you would get a bonus mutation, because that made sense to my mind, that being humanoid was an advantage in many, many ways, so that meant you didn't get that extra. 
Um, and I really like the idea of the mutant Epoch having the ghost mutant. I just, when one person was was asking me about it, says, "Why heard they had ghost robots?" <laughs> Thought, like, no, they have ghost mutants, which is how m many Marvel, most Marvel mutants are, which is perfectly normal-looking people with superpowers on top of that. Um, Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver from the Avengers 2 is an example. You would never see, notice them walking down the street and say, hey, that's a mutant, whereas many mutants in uh, the mutant epoch or Game of World would be visibly mutants. That person's got three arms and a atrophied head. They're not regular. Um, so, you know, that kind of thing is far more obvious. Whereas Ronnie prefers that horror um, post-apocalyptic vibe where survival is is the key, where counting every round because you only have a certain number of them, where you have to make sure you have enough food and resources at every single point in the game. Where if your team, one of your teammates doesn't pull their weight or turns on the group, you could all die. Or as I'm looking for a bigger, splashier kind of high fantasy version of a post-apocalyptic setting, which isn't a shock. And D and D is my favorite game, as far as fantasy goes. Um, so I'm into fa high fantasy more than I am into low fantasy or, or a very grim and gritty setting. Grim and gritty setting. Now, having said all this, I have used grim and gritty elements in Game World. In fact, we were running the third edition of the game. That's the one with the color chart from um, the Marvel Super Heroes game, if that was the same chart. And I'm, I had a, a pretty much the same tone I like, which is science fantasy. It was a little bit harder than I normally run it. But I could add in grim and gritty elements when I wanted. And my observation over time and, and reflection upon that game and other games in, 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 from the point of view of 2015 is that if you have a science fantasy or even uh, even a, a light, goofy, cartoony game, it's easy to layer grim and gritty on top of that at any level you want. Whereas if you start at a grim and gritty game, it's really hard to put in light tones as a break. It's really difficult because if you've established that state of mind, that, that, that style, that theme, that aesthetic, it's hard to break it without breaking people's immersion. Whereas if you have a light tone, it's easy to attack serious stuff onto it and then return to the light tone. And I prefer that option. Now, I at this point, I, I have a slightly more serious bent on many of it so I would I would I would probably have less of the wacky than I would in the past um, but I'm older and I'm a different person now than I was then um, but I think that's why I am where I am and I think that's why Ronnie is where he is because of our own personal experiences in our youth with the post-apocalyptic setting so I ask my fine viewers Don your post-apocalyptic helmets and tell me, what is your personal history with the post-apocalyptic genre? And you, do you feel that it has impacted your preferences in role-playing games, if you are into that particular genre of role-playing games? You don't have to be, even if you have a, even if you are a fan of the post-apocalyptic setting. And of course, if you aren't a fan of the post-apocalyptic setting, I don't know why you're watching this movie. This, rather, this the video, rather. Um, is that too it's a movie? Is it? I don't know, but it doesn't have a script, so it's avant-garde! Um, and also, do you agree with my assessment that it's easier to go light tone to dark than dark to light? Do you agree with that assessment? Or, do you, or can you do either? Is, is, are you an eagle opportunity abuser and can you can easily move from tar low, uh, light to dark to dark to light and without any transition issues? Because if you can, kudos on you. I can't do it. Um, so tell me. What are your thoughts on your personal past with the post-apocalyptic genre?